Hello, this is Chema Nana, the founder of Creators in Business and an award-winning public speaker. I've trained over 1,000 public speakers and today I'm going to be telling you what you should know before your first public speaking performance. Now, just in case you don't subscribe to this channel yet, just click on that subscribe button and click on the bell to turn on notifications so that you can get notifications whenever we post a new video. So, straight to what we have today. <laughs> First of all, I'd love to define what public speaking is for some of you that might not have a clear definition of what it means. Now, there's a definition I love very much because of a key word it contains, and that is public speaking is the act of performing a speech. Now, why do I love this definition? Because it contains the word perform. Now, perform tells you that public speaking is more than just your words, more than just what you're saying. A lot of other things go into your performance. That means your facial expression matters a lot, how you dress matters a lot, your body language, your gestures, your stage management. It's also that it is more than just the words you say. Every other thing you do on stage counts. It's a performance. There's a book I read, The Greatest Salesman, and the author said something very striking, something that has been stuck in my head for a long while. And he said, a great public speaker is, first of all, a great actor. Let me take that again. A great public speaker is first of all a great actor so on stage you're not just anybody you're acting you're trying to embody your speech and that's the problem with a lot of Nigerian politicians public speeches because they just read their lines they don't embody they don't perform it that's why it gets boring and monotone that's why you cannot even listen to their speech to the end because you get tuned off so Everything you do on stage counts. You're dressing. It's like a costume for you. You're performing, remember? So now let's get straight to what we have today. What you should know before your first public speaking appearance. Number one thing you should know is that your audience are not your enemies. They are not against you. They are on your side. So there's no reason for you to be scared of them. Now I see a lot of public speakers, when you want to go and speak to people, you get jittery, you begin to get nervous. Do they like you? You think that when you're on stage, everyone watching you is waiting for you to make just one tiny mistake so that they could laugh at you and then you make a fool of yourself. But that's not true. Think about it this way. These are people like you who have several other things they could be doing. They could be at home, sleeping. They could be with their family. They could have been at work. They could have been resting, they could have been doing some other fun activities, but they are there, seated down, listening to you for a reason. There is something you know that they don't know, and that is why you are up there on stage and they are down there, seated, listening to you. So that should make you feel like they are on your side. They are there rooting for you to give them value. They want you to make their time there worth it. So they want you to perform well. They don't want you to disgrace yourself. So even if they might not have smiling faces, give them excuses. For example, some people are like me. We might be in a good mood, but our face just does not show it. We are not angry. We are not disappointed. We are not bored. But we just don't know how to smile unconsciously unless we pay particular attention to it. So even if you're looking at us amongst your audience, do not feel like we don't love your performance. We might not just know that our facial expression is not welcoming. So what do you do in such cases? Look for those that are smiling and focus on them so that it helps you psychologically. So you look for those that are in tune with what you're saying. So it helps you to connect better with your audience. But don't think that the fact we're not that we're not smiling means that we're not enjoying your performance. We could have had a bad day at work. We could be coming from somewhere where we had a terrible experience. It's not just about you. It could be something else that's making us not to smile. Okay? So once you understand that your audience are on your side, you need to also know something very important, which takes us to point number two, which is whenever you have to rehearse for your public speaking performance, it's not just enough to rehearse your lines you have to record it there's something i call the rrr formula for public speaking which is something i use a lot something that i've taught over a thousand public speakers and they've given me amazing reviews of how it's helped their performance greatly now what's the rrr formula it says 
rehearse, record, and repeat. Let me think that again. Rehearse, record, and repeat. Now, there is something that recording your rehearsal does for you. Now, it helps you know whether you're speaking way too fast, way too slow, or if you're using the right pace. Now, when you speak way too fast, your audience can barely hear you. And then, what's the use of speaking if you cannot hear what you're saying? And when you speak way too slow, you get bored. So you have to ensure you strike a balance. You have to ensure there's a balance in your performance. You don't speak way too fast, you don't speak way too slow. So when you record your performance, you get to see these slips that you might have noticed if you're just reciting your lines randomly to yourself in the mirror. But when you get to watch your performance, you get to spot out these errors better. And also helps you to know if you're speaking way too where's the word now if you're speaking if you're audible yes that's the word i was looking for it helps you know if you are audible like i tell public speakers a lot what's the use of giving value if nobody can hear you we can only appreciate value if it is heard so speak up be audible and don't shout at your audience there's a difference between being audible and shouting so everything is about balance know when to do what know how to modulate your pitch know when to go fast know when to go slow know when to go high know when to go low these things are important in public speaking and then another thing that recording your rehearsal does for you is that it helps you to point out filler words now this might be a new term to some of you now what are filler words for the filler words are words people say unconsciously when you're trying to think of what next to say for example um um hmm, you just need to fill up the space where you're trying to think of your next point. And now the problem with filler words is that they make you sound unsure of yourself. They make you sound less confident. They make you sound less in control, less in charge. So you want to ensure that you cut down your use of filler words to the barest minimum. Now, how do you get rid of filler words? There's something called a click technique. So how does this technique work? It simply says that when you're rehearsing, have somebody click a finger, click a finger, whenever you're re rehearsing your speech. So the, way, the number of times you hear this click of the finger, it begins to distract you. So you get, it draws your attention to the fact that you're using it way too much and then you consciously decide to reduce the pace, the rate at which you use filler words. So that clicking technique, the clicking sound distracts you a lot. So you realize, oh, I'm using filler words way too much. Because this is this sound is getting way too frequent. So you begin to consciously reduce the rate at which you use filler words. And also another thing that could help you, something I that I use a lot, is I use the word so. But you have to be careful when using this. Whenever I'm thinking of what to say next, I could just say so. So it helps it gives me time to think about it. Sometimes just take a pause. Just pause. Don't make the pause too long so it doesn't get awkward. But just take a pause, make a strategy where you're thinking about the next thing to say. Pause. Resist the urge to speak when you're thinking of what next to say. You don't always have to fill every silence with words. Sometimes it's okay to just allow the silence be. Okay? So now, apart from helping you with filler words, when you record your rehearsals, you also get to see other minor, minor errors that you might not notice if you rehearse in front of a mural. For example, when you're a writer, you notice that sometimes you have this plan to write a sentence like Dami went to school yesterday. But then you read what you wrote later on and you find out that you wrote Dami went Dami went yesterday. You omitted some words. So when you record your rehearsal, you might notice that when you were speaking, some words were not pronounced properly. Like you glossed over some words, you omitted some words in your hurry. So then when you notice those things, whenever you get to that part of your speech, you make sure that you it draws you make conscious efforts to pronounce those words that you omitted the previous time. And then something very important I almost forgot, I just remembered now. What recording your rehearsal helps you to do very well, very, very important is that it helps you to realize if you're mispronouncing some words. Now as a public speaker, Correct pronunciation is very, very important. Very, very important. So if you record your rehearsal, you get to know if you're pronouncing 
pronunciation as pronunciation or as pronunciation and that is wrong so when you record your rehearsal you get to see those little little errors that just standing in front of the mirror might not point out for you so re record rehearse and repeat so when you see your errors in your recorded rehearsal you repeat the whole process all over again now when you talk about rehearsing many people don't think it's about just reciting your lines but rehearsing is way deeper than that if you just recite your lines when you go on stage you might still make some mistakes because i told you public speaking is more than just the words you're saying your body language your stage management so you have to not just rehearse the audio version of your speech but also rehearse the video part of your speech sometimes make a video of yourself speaking so that you get to know what you're going to do with your hands these hands are the most distracting things a public speaker could have so you have to know what do you want to do with your hands when speaking do you want to keep them folded in front of you do you want to use them to highlight your points you want to keep them at the back of your at your back do you want to, how do you want to use your hands when do you want to turn to one section of your audience what do you want to do with your facial expressions you have to practice all these things so you don't go on stage and then all you know are your lines but then you don't know what to do with your body you don't know what to do with your legs you don't know when to move you don't you just stand in there so record your rehearsal not just your life don't, don't just rehearse your lines but also record your rehearsals and then record the video aspects of your speech so till i come your way next time i hope that these tips i shared for you you practice them before your first public speaking appearance once again my name is choma nana the founder of creators in business this is my youtube channel where i share amazing tips on public speaking creative writing spoken word fashion a lot of things but basically for you, I think your interest is public speaking, so click on that subscribe button, click on the notification bell. So whenever I post about public speaking, you get to know that a video is up and then you rush to watch it. So yeah, come your way next time. Bye.